Hello, my name is Matt Max. Welcome to the first actual episode where I'm going to show you stuff now. First thing I want to say, you see those yellow LEDs? Yeah, ignore them. They, they are just telling me that every single line has power because this line in particular, you can see, is a little bit problematic. Anyway, so today I want to talk about the basic unit of a computer, which is a logic gate. Now, this is actually quite simple and I'm going to show it to you through examples. That happens when you, do, when you use cables without pins. So first I want to show you is this really simple circuit. So what do we actually see here? We have plus five volts, right? We have five volts through our power supply. And this is zero volts, sometimes also called ground. This is a switch, this is a switch, this is an LED. All right, so really simple. We have this here, okay? You see the red cable goes from the positive power line that gets five volt from the power supply to the first switch. Then from the first switch, we have this yellow cable going to the second switch. All right, so the red cable is basically this. This is the red cable. This is the yellow cable, first yellow cable. And we have a second yellow cable, and it's this one. That is this part right here. And then we have our LED. And the LED is connected to ground, zero volts, through this blue cable. Now, we have two switches. If you press one switch, nothing happens. If you press the other switch, nothing happens. We have to press both switches for the LED to go on. Now, this seems really simple, and it is. And you know, the majority of you would have known this by looking at this easy circuit diagram, okay? Two switches in series. Of course I have to press both switches, Matt Max. What do you think I am, a fucking idiot? Hold on. First of all, let's start talking about all of the stuff in a little bit more professional manner, okay? This is an input. This is an input. This LED is an output, okay? Input A, input B, output. Now, every input and every output in a computer can have two states. They can be either true, that means a pressed switch, or an LED that's on, that is true, okay? Or they can be false. True, false, true, false. You can also call this one and zero. One stands for true, zero stands for false. One, zero, one, zero. So that's pretty simple. Now, over here we have a different circuit. The second circuit is this one right here. We have two switches again, but those this time those two switches are parallel to each other, and then we have our LED. Okay, so you can see we have two red cables. One red cable going to input A over here, and the second red cable going to input B over here. And then the two yellow cables connect input A and input B to output. Okay, so that's a yellow cable, that's a yellow cable, and this is our blue cable again. Now, this circuit right here, the right one, behaves completely different from the left one. The left one only goes true if both inputs are true. Okay, it only goes one if both inputs are one. This over here behaves differently. This over here, this over here is true when I press one input. It doesn't matter which one I press, it's true as soon as at least one input is pressed. Also, if both inputs are true, the output is also true. This is called AND, because input A and B need to be true. And this is called OR, because input one or input two need to be true. For the output to be true. So we can actually go ahead and we can write this behavior down and by doing this we gain a little bit of understanding about how a computer actually works. Now let me write this down. Our first circuit, our AND circuit, has the following behavior. Input A, input B, output. What I'm going to do now is called a truth table. And that is the defining, defining important thing 
of a so-called logic gate. Now, let me explain you how a truth table works. So we have input A, input B, and output. What I'm going to do is I'm going to write down every possible case. So let's say input A is zero, it's false. Input B is zero, it's false. What happens? We see it right here. When input A and B are false, the LED is not on. So output is false too. Makes sense, right? Now, when I press input A, but not input B, output is still false. So if input A is one and input two is zero, output is still zero. If I press input B, again, nothing happens. So if input A is zero and input B is one, output is still zero. Only if I press both does the output actually go true. So only if input A and B is one, the output is one. Okay, this is called a truth table. And this is important. Okay, this is important. This is the defining factor of every single logic gate. Now, there's more to it. A logic gate also has a symbol. Now, the symbol for an end gate is this one. It looks like a little bullet. Input A, input B, output. Okay? It looks like this. And please remember the symbol because I'm going to use it in the future. And I actually have computer programs where you can use those programs, uh, use those symbols to make complicated circuits without actually building them and still see how the circuit behaves. Now, this is our end gate. And now we are going to define our OR gate. Now, the truth table for our OR gate is completely different. Okay, because our OR gate, as we can see, if you do not press A or B, output is false. So if A is zero and B is zero, output is zero. But as soon as we press at least one input, oops. As soon as we press at least one input, output is true, okay. So, oops. If A is true and B is not true, output is true. If A is not true and B is true, output is true. If both are true, output is true. You see that this truth table is completely different from this truth table. And actually, the truth table is what defines the logic gate. And we will see logic gates in the next episodes that have really strange behaviors and actually also kind of cool behaviors. Now, this OR gate also has a symbol. And this symbol looks like this. Looks like the Federation badge. I'm really bad at drawing this. So Federation badge or bullet and those are really simple circuits, right? And by now you're probably yelling at me and you're t uh, telling me, dude, yeah, my computer doesn't use switches like this. What the fuck? Yeah, you're right. Your computer uses transistors. So now I'm going to go ahead and to going to build those two circuits with transistors. All right, welcome back. Now, what you see right here is a transistor. And actually, if you buy it one because you want to build stuff yourself, then you have this right now. Now, transistor has three lags. And those three lags are two completely different things. And actually, if you look at a transistor from the top, you see that it has a flat side and there's a round side. If you Lay your, your transistor down, round side up. Okay, round side up. The three legs are the emitter, the base, and the collector. All right, emitter, base, collector. Emitter, base, collector. Now, what the hell does this actually mean? Now, this is an NPN transistor. That means that the symbol for the NP NPN transistor looks like this. This is the emitter, this is the collector, and this is the base. So what the hell does a transistor actually do? 
A transistor basically acts like a switch. This is an NPN transistor. That means that when no voltage is coming into the base, the resistance from the collector to the emitter is really high. In other words, the switch is off. However, when there is current coming into B, the resistance is really low. That means the switch is closed. So, in other words, when the signal that I send into the transistor is 1, the switch is closed. When the signal I send into it is 0, the switch is open and no current can go through. Now, let's actually go ahead and let's use this in an actual circuit to realize an end circuit. Now, we know that an end circuit is basically nothing else than two switches, one after the other, okay? That's basically an end, end circuit. One switch, second switch. Now, this behaves like a switch. So all we have to do is to put two transistors in series behind one another. That's it. That's our end gate. That is so easy you can realize an end gate with transistors. The problem is that transistors need a lot of stuff around it to actually work. For example, we have to somehow trigger this and this. Okay, we have to somehow give this circuit two inputs. Now, for the two inputs, we're using two actual switches. So we have one switch here and one switch here. Now, here's a problem. If you would just put 5 volt in here, then the transistor would be on the whole time. So what we have to do is we have to put a resistor in here. This resistor has to be 10 kilo ohm. All right. And then we just connect this to 5 volts, and we connect this to our LED, and then we're done. Then we have an AND gate with transistors, okay? Because only if both switches are closed do we have our signal at the base, and only if we have a signal at the base do we actually have current flowing this way. So let's look at this, shall we? Now, I realize this looks a little bit more complicated than what we had before. Now, completely forget this side. This is the end side, okay? So what do we have here? If input 1 with input 2 is connected via 10k ohm resistors to both of the transistors, which are in series, and then the transistors are connected via the white wire to the LED. Now, you will see that this behaves like an end circuit, like an end gate. Now, what is an end gate? An end gate is only true when both inputs are true. That's the definition of an end gate. So, let's look at it. If you press input 1, nothing happens. If you press input B, nothing happens. Okay, actually, that's a little signal. Only if we press both do we actually get true, okay? So one pressed, it's false, two pressed, it's false. You have to press both to actually get our signal. Now, why is there a little signal when I press one switch? You see, it, it has a little bit, right? How is that? Well, the problem is that although we have a resistor here, to limit the amount of current actually going into our transistor. If we would leave this away, the transistor would just burn, basically. But the problem is that when we close this, a little bit of the current is actually going through the transistor into the LED. Now, let's have actually have a look what happens if we remove this resistor, okay? Although we have to do it really short, otherwise we might actually destroy our transistor, so. Don't do this at home, right? I'm doing it so you don't have to waste six cents. All right, so. 
just remove the, tra the resistor. Now, see what happens when I press this button. First of all, the transistors get really hot, because there's a lot of current going through it, because we removed the resistor. And second of all, now our end gate isn't working anymore. It's true when we press one button. And the reason is that without the resistor, the current is so high that it's basically going through the transistor into the LED. So that is why you always need to use a resistor. The next thing is the OR gate. Now, the OR gate, we remember, was just two switches in a parallel. So we have to build two switches in parallel with transistors. So that's easy enough, isn't it? One transistor. Two transistors. Then we have our LED. That's it. That's two in parallel. Now they both need five volts. That's five volts. And now again, they both need switches. Again, with resistors. And there we have it. This is our OR gate. This is what I've built on the right side. And this looks a lot more complicated, but it's actually not. Basically, what you see right here is we're going from plus 5 volt to the switches, that's the red cables. And at the same time, we are going from plus 5 volt to the collector, right? This is the collector, to the collector of the transistor. And then we have cables going from the switches to the base of the transistor. Again, let's try it out. If you press input B, then the output is true. If you press input A, then the output is true. If you press both inputs, the output is true. Yes, let's look it up. This is an OR gate, right? As soon as one input is true, the output is true. So, that is how you build and an OR gates out of transistors. Again, it's really simple. Let's really quickly recap. So, a transistor has three legs. Emitter, base, and collector. The current is flowing from the collector to the emitter, but only if you have current at the base. And also, please put a 10K resistor between your switches and your base, or before the switches, because otherwise, this won't work. My name is Max. Thanks for watching this episode, and tune in next time.